Okay, so today we're gonna be taking a quick look at the Z790 Apex. So rule number one of Asus products, never buy it on launch day, always wait for other people to beta test that shit first. The last few generations, the quality control of the Asus kind of motherboard lineup has been atrocious. Speaking of Asus quality control, my motherboard here, this is, this is the board, it didn't even come in an anti-static bag. Like it was just, it was just in the box, which seems super weird. Secondly, it doesn't have a backplate, which uh, extreme overclockers will say, backplates are bad for uh, liquid nitrogen. Yeah, but 99% of people buying this motherboard are not going to be liquid nitrogen users. They should have, for the cost of this thing, they should have put a damn backplate on it. You XOC nerds, you can take backplates off. It's not like we can materialize them and put them on after. Now, thankfully, mine seems to be good, okay? But there are reports of motherboards out there. Like, even mine a little bit is actually quite bent. You can kind of like, like, uh... Right? It's maybe like a, uh, a few degree bend, but there are there are pictures of some of them out there where there's like a 30 degree bend in the PCB and that, I don't even know how the hell that happens. Like nothing here should be bending the PCB, but apparently Ace is just shipping them out like that. So buyer beware if you are gonna pick one of these things up, make sure you buy it from somewhere that has a good return policy. Now this motherboard specifically is what you would call a what's the goal motherboard. This motherboard is $700. The, uh, the Z790i Edge that I just reviewed in the last video, that's 350. So that, that, that board is literally half the price of this one. So what do you get for that extra $350? Well, there's two things I wanna test today. The first thing I wanna test, now you guys are all familiar with the Asus silicon prediction quality number, right? Um, Asus dominates the market with their software features. I guess, would, would you call it software? BIOS features, they, they, they lead the market with the BIOS features right now. They came out with another one called the Memory Controller SP. That's right, now you can bin your memory controllers. So long story short, you don't need those SP numbers. They're just arbitrary values. It's kind of like Weight Watchers. Weight Watchers assigns a number to a caloric value of a food just to make it easier to understand, right? But you, if you can count calories, you don't need that, right? The SP system is exactly the same. It gives you a number so you know how good your chip is, but if you do it manually and you go through the voltages, you can figure it out yourself on any vendor's motherboard, right? So when the 12900K came out, I tested the SP against my voltages and it was accurate, it was. So today, we're gonna do the exact same thing. I already know which one of my CPUs has the best memory controller. So we're gonna try them all. We're gonna see if this thing knows which one is the best as well. Test number two, we're gonna take my best 13900K, put it in this bad boy, and then see how far we can get on the memory overclocks with safe voltages, daily gaming voltages, no extreme shit here. So I already know that this thing is going to be 100% not worth it, but for all of you guys out there that are in denial and just want to spend a bunch of money with no goal, um, I will leave links to this down below for you guys. If it, I'm not sure if Amazon has it, but it, whatever, I'll leave it down there if it is on there. Also, this video was brought to you by the supporters and one of my mods actually helped me get it. I had to ship it to him first, then he shipped it to me because you can't buy this board in Canada just yet. So... I have the best community. So let's go find out if we can convince ourselves with, with some mental gymnastics if this board is worth $700 to gamers. Okay, so we got the Apex here on the floor and we installed the um, 7600 sticks that I have. I put some aftermarket coolers on them. Um, and then we're gonna go into the BIOS here and we are gonna check where is it? AI features. And then we're gonna go get memory controller SP. And then let's find out what it does. See what it, uh, see what happens here. Okay, it just finished. It actually didn't take that long. It took about 30 seconds and it just pumped me back in the BIOS here. Let's see what it says, AI features. 
SP of 77. I don't know if that's good or not, but, uh, uh, yeah, okay, well, whatever. Uh, SP of 77. Let's go check the other two CPUs here and see what we got on them. You know what, though? I'm actually going to do it one more time just to confirm the results. Make sure it doesn't do, uh... I want to just make sure that the results are kind of consistently the same with run to run, right? Just make sure there's no crazy business happening. Just to make sure that it actually is doing what it says that it's doing, right? Okay, we're on reboot number two on the same CPU. Let's check. 77. Okay, so, uh... At least it's consistent, so that's good. Okay, so let's go try CPU number two. Okay, CPU number two, we have, what the hell is it here? MC77 again. Huh. So that's two 77s. Okay, well, whatever. CPSP77, so uh, pretty consistent. So that, that seems to make sense, though. They, these both, I would say... These, both of these CPUs kind of capped out at like 7,800 uh, megahertz DDR5. I want to say, right? In my testing, um, in my manual binning, this is kind of basically in line with what I saw. So let's go try CPU number three now. Okay, so number three, CPU number three here. This is the one that I binned myself on the Unify board. Yeah, okay. Wait, where the hell is it? So, uh, memory controller SP of 82, right. So CPU 3 had 82 on it, and this one maxed out at 8,000. This was the one that did that, um, that does 8,000 on the edge board over there, right? So, um, basically, yeah, that makes sense. So, you're... It doesn't I wouldn't worry too much about this again the performance difference between 7800 and 8000 is literally not even not even 0.1% like it doesn't matter right but it just goes to show you how tightly binned these CPUs are at the end of the day right and then maybe um you might be able to extrapolate 5 points is maybe one bin of memory speed i guess again this is just kind of a scientific video i wanted to I wanted to see if my own manual binning confirmed with the Asus SP numbers, and it seems to... I mean, every time I try this out, it seems to be accurate. So, there you go. The, the SP calculations are accurate once again. So, props to Asus for making a good feature. Okay, so now we're over here on the uh, test setup here. The next step that we're going to do is we're going to go see... If this thing, well, I'm, I'm sure it'll reach 8,000, but we're going to go see how it compares to this little guy over here. Because this one does 8,000 for a cheap price. And we're going to go see what this one can do for an expensive price. Again, no suicide voltages, only daily gaming voltages allowed. Oh, man, I'm doing 8,200 right now. And I just got an error after 43 minutes. Like, oh, we're close, though. I might be able to get it to work at 8,200. Oh, yeah. 8,200, baby. We got it. Now, whether it's worth it or not, I don't know. It's just, that's just cool to look at. So, in conclusion, the memory controller SP is pretty sweet. It does work, but also remember, I already knew which one was the best just by manually doing it. But this does make the process much quicker for those of you that are bidding your CPUs for some reason. Now, in terms of the memory overclock, again, like, I don't know, like, like the, 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 the FPS difference between 8000 and 8200 is going to be zero, right? E even probably like 7,600 to 8,200 might be like one or 2%, right? So you're like, yeah. So like this board is cool, don't get me wrong, but it's, it's, it's just so hard to justify when that Z790 Edge exists for 350 bucks, right? So you can just pair that thing with some cheap A die and you get them and you max out the platform for half the money, right? But it is a good board. I would suggest that 
you should really only buy this thing if you're more of like, if you lean more towards the hardware enthusiast side rather than the gaming side, right? Or if you have any kind of budgetary concerns whatsoever, because you can get a lot for $350, right? That's like a GPU upgrade. A 350 is the difference between a 4080 to a 4090 upgrade, right? I would rather much have that than this motherboard, right? Or a better RAM upgrade, better NVMe, lots of better, better monitor upgrade, right? This motherboard it does not power the iGPU. You don't want to use this for workstation purposes. Oddly enough, it has an excellent array of PCI Express slots. So it actually would be a great workstation board if it had an iGPU, but it doesn't, right? So not an iGPU type of quick sync board. I didn't actually encounter any problems with it. Uh, the BIOS worked just as I expected. All the USB ports work. The BIOS flashback works. Like functionally, it's a good board. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just the price, right? Anyway, guys, that's it for this one. I will be using this board in my personal build for myself. I'm just waiting on a case and some fans to come in before I actually build it. Uh, so subscribe for that. But you're gonna... It's gonna be a gooder. Anyway, guys, I hope you learned something today. If you like the content, hit that subscribe button. Do all that YouTube SEO stuff. Like, share, subscribe. Comment down below what you thought of the white Z790 Apex. Also, apologies for the lack of content lately. The, the Warzone scene right now is just so busy with builds and consults. I'm really struggling to just get content done, but I'm trying my best here. So subscribe, bear with me, and I will try to bring you as much content as possible. And I will see you guys in the next one. Talk to you later.